is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, welcome to our virtual worship service. I pray that you are inspired by the word of God and encouraged by the songs of praise. We have a special guest coming to share with us today. I pray that you get something out of our worship.
loving me. Thank you for dying for 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 me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. 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 Then you got up for me. 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 Oh, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Letcher, and good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Glad to bring you a word from the Lord. If you would, let's go in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity and for this much of this day. We ask that you speak through us, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God, my Redeemer. This morning, we're going to be coming to you out of the book of Habakkuk, the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets, if you will, the book of Habakkuk, near the end of the Old Testament, a short book, a minor prophet with a lot to say. Habakkuk chapter number one. There are only three chapters, but we're going to use for our basic text this morning, Habakkuk one, verses two through four. Habakkuk one, verses 2 through 4 from the New Living Translation Bible. It reads, How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous and the justice is perverted with bribes and tri trickery. So reads the word of God. And our subject today, peace in the pandemic. Peace in the pandemic. This prophet, Habakkuk, whose name in Hebrew means an embracing and unfolding faith in God, was deeply disturbed by the violence and destruction caused by the Babylonians. Many of us today are deeply disturbed by the racial injustice, the killing of our black men and women from coast to coast, and the coronavirus pandemic not to mention the everyday matters of life and the economic status of our own families. Like Habakkuk, perhaps many of you like me are asking the question, how much more will God allow to transpire before he breaks his silence? Yes, we all want answers just like Habakkuk. I admonish you at, to read uh, the entire book at your earliest convenience, but right now we're going to focus on this scripture text. Let me encourage you to ask God to give us a spirit of calm, a spirit of calmness and peace as we await his judgment over these issues that we find ourselves pondering over. I believe that just as God answered the prophet, he'll answer us. Our scripture text states, that after the prophet prayed, hallelujah, he decided he was going to go and wait and watch to hear what God had to say. Patience is needed, my brothers and sisters, when we are waiting for a response to have some peace during the pandemic. We know that God is omniscient, he's omnipotent, and he's omnipresent. So what's going on in our world today is not a surprise to God. It didn't catch him off guard like it did us. God's plan has always been on his time schedule. Over in Isaiah, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. He knows the ending 
before the beginning begins. I'm glad about it. But we're looking for peace in the midst of the pandemic. Brothers and sisters, as we watch and wait, there are three things I believe we should be doing. And you may want to jot these down. There, there are some others, but I think you may want to jot these down. First, we need to be looking to God. We hear so much and see so much on the radio, TV, and social media. Everyone has an opinion. No one has the solution. Matthew 7 and 7 and 8 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. Whoever knocks, the door will be opened to you. I can hear the late great Albertina Walker singing, makes no difference what the problem. I can go to God in prayer. Yes, I have this blessed assurance. He will take my gloom and sorrow and turn it into bright, bright light. Yeah, 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 I can call him when I need him. I can go to God in prayer. It makes no difference what we're dealing with. God is our answer. He is our strength. When I need him, I can call him. Our Father up in heaven, I can go to God in prayer. I have no doubt, my sisters and my brothers, that he will work it out. I can go to God in prayer. In fact, Jesus said we could ask the Father anything in his name, and the Father would hear us. Look into Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. As we seek him, we must believe that God will give us peace in the pandemic. And the second point I want us to think about is listening to God. That's in the second chapter of Habakkuk, verses 2 through 4. He says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Stick a pen right there. But the just shall live by his faith. I hear the psalmist say, the hymnist rather, when he wrote the words, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The Son of God is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I tell you, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and it is my peace while in this pandemic. Maybe, just maybe, God is trying to tell us something. Are we listening, saints? Whose voice are you listening to? Whose report will you believe? God says to every believer, regardless of the circumstances, trust me. If the Lord said it, you can count on it. He will do just what he said. And the third point, living for God, living for God. Yes, we have got to make up in our mind who we're going to live for. We see in this third chapter that the prophet went from a prayer of pain in chapter 1 to a prayer of praise in chapter 3. Hallelujah. After being reminded that the just shall live by faith, the prophet summed it up in verses 17 and 19 of this third chapter. He summed it up like this. He said, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us 
to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lead not to thy own understanding in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he shall, he shall direct our paths. He'll give us peace in the midst of the pandemic, peace that surpasses all understanding. Romans 5 and 1 says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We need a personal, a personal relationship with Jesus. I admonish you today to get to know him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to have a daily, daily relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm convinced, my brothers and sisters, that if we talk it over with Jesus, he'll make it all right. I have no doubt he's going to bring us out. Yeah, 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 he's going to bring us out. You know why? Because I've been through too much. I've come too far. I can't turn around. I won't give up. Church, there are some things I may not know and some places I may never go, but I'm sure of this one thing, that God is real. Oh, yes, he is. I can feel him down in my soul. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. That's why I love him so. He's so real to me. How real? I'm so glad you asked. Real enough that one Friday, Jesus paid the sin debt that we all owe. He was crucified one Friday at Calvary, hung on an old rugged cross. Good Jesus, God's only begotten son, felt forsaken on the cross. He cried out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? But he didn't come down off that cross. He stayed there for your sins and mine. And when he cried out, it's finished, he gave up. He gave up the ghost. Oh yeah, they pierced him in his side. Blood and water came out. Blood for redemption and water for baptism. Oh yeah, he died, I tell you, on that old rugged cross. They took him off the cross and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning. I said early Sunday morning, Jesus rose with all power in his hands. And one day he's coming back for his church. He's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? Are you going back with him? Are you making preparation? I believe he's on his way back. Saints, let's get our house in order. Get our house in order. For if the Lord said it, you can count on it. He will do just what he says. So let the church say amen. And it is so. Yes, it is so. He will do just what he said. God will hear us. He will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds and our trust stayed on him. And he'll give us peace in this pandemic. Don't panic. Ask God for peace. God bless you. God bless you. The door of the church is open. We extend to you an invitation to discipleship. You may unite with the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church by sending an email with your name and your contact information to ghpruitt at gmail.com and someone will reach out to you within 48 hours. Again, that email address is ghpruitt at gmail.com. And now our pastor, Reverend Dr. Aaron K. Letcher. What a wonderful word of God. We thank God for the word and we thank God for also the messenger. We pray that the word of God has inspired you to live a life that is pleasing in the eyesight of God. Also, brothers and sisters, we want to offer an opportunity for generosity and giving. There is an opportunity for generosity and giving. You can give to Pleasant Green um, uh, two ways. You can uh, give by check or money order in the mail, or you can give online. You can mail check or money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can mail check or a money order uh, to the church through that mode. And then you also can give uh, online. 
You can log on online at www.pgmbcstl.org and you can give online. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for your generosity and we thank you for your faithfulness and in giving. Also, brothers and sisters, we also want you to take advantage of every opportunity of Christian education that we have. We want you to take advantage of our wow word on the wire uh, at 830 Sunday mornings. Uh, the dial in information is listed below. We want you to take advantage of that. Also, we want you to take advantage of our Sunday school opportunities. Our Sunday school opportunities, uh, you can dial in on Saturday at 5 o'clock p.m. And the dial in information uh, is listed below. And also, brothers and sisters, we have POW, prayer over the wire, uh, at 7 uh, p.m. on Wednesday nights. Uh, brothers and sisters, you can call in uh, to pray and also you can have a, a quick Bible study that is on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Call in uh, for prayer uh, and a Bible study. Also, uh, on Thursday nights, the youth and young adult Bible study is at 7 o'clock p.m. For those of you who are a little bit more computer savvy, uh, we have our Bible study 7 o'clock uh, on Zoom. Uh, and the link to our Zoom uh, meeting uh, or our Zoom Bible study is usually listed uh, the day of uh, Bible study uh, on Facebook um, via our Pleasant Parishioners uh, page uh, and our Pleasant Green Facebook page. Brothers and sisters, we challenge you, we challenge you that while uh, it seems like the doors of the church are closed to take advantage of these virtual opportunities for learning. Now, we bless God for you. We thank you for sharing with us. Uh, I want to just offer a word of benediction as we come to our close. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May we all say together virtually, Amen. Until next time.